Doug, good to see you. <laughs> good to see you too. Tell me, Doug, what do you do? What's your job at the moment? My job is uh, Dean of Arts at Hong Kong Baptist University. I've been doing that for about a year now, and um, I'm chair professor of English, but um, mm -hmm. I don't do any teaching in the English department. I'm currently teaching um, an MA course in Western Translation Theory. Okay, so you haven't abandoned translation haven't, studies. haven't abandoned translation studies or okay. teaching. Okay, good. Okay. Haven't gone entirely over to the dark side. Okay, now you don't look very Chinese or Hong Kong-ish. <laughs> <laughs> How did you finish up here? What? I, I didn't finish up here. Oh, I okay. just ended up. Uh, yeah. yes, yes. uh, I uh, what brought you here. Let's see. I, four or five years ago, I started thinking. I've spent my entire career shuttling between the U.S. and Europe, and um, never had any experience of Asia. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> never studied an Asian language, and so I got into a, a Mandarin class at the University of Mississippi, where I was teaching, and um, started applying for jobs. Um, first I started all over the world, but increasingly I started focusing in on Asia and increasingly, finally, uh, applied for seven jobs in Hong Kong. Mm -hmm. Okay. What's translation studies like in Hong Kong? Intense. A lot of people are doing it. Yeah. A lot of people are interested in it. Um, there are whole schools, I mean in the sense of camps, um, the um, the theory camp and the practice mm -hmm. camp, the people who hate theory, you know. Uh, Sounds familiar. Yeah, and the, uh, the the people who like theory and actually like practice too. Mm -hmm. but, um, mm -hmm. uh, and it's a, it's a small city. I mean, it's eight million people, but um, geographically small. Mm -hmm. Eight universities, mm -hmm. and uh, that there's a uh, two departments of translation. Two departments, sort of omnibus departments with uh, Chinese and linguistics and things like that. And then there are um, a few sort of freestanding programs. I think there's only one university in Hong Kong that has no translation okay. studies at all. So okay. A lot of so translation studies going on here. Yeah. yeah. And just across the border in, in mainland China, mm -hmm. translation studies is huge. Okay. Okay. And you've you've been exploring get, that as well. I get yeah. invited to the mainland a lot. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Good. Okay. Before we get into what those debates mean, uh, what were you doing when you were twenty three, twenty four, twenty five? I was uh, living in Finland, getting married. Actually, I got married mm -hmm. when I was twenty three, and had my first child when I was twenty five, and. Um, uh, let's see, that would have been 23, uh, uh, 70s, late 70s, okay. um, and um, I, w I was a lecturer in English at the University of Yubaskula in Finland, and um, was getting translation jobs. The... Um, well, how did you get to... You're American, we should say yeah. that, you're American. Right, right. <laughs> Going to Finland first. Okay. You well, have, you how did, you, go, get, but how you, did you get to Finland? All right. Yeah, you, yeah. you don't want to start when I'm 13. No, it doesn't make 16. sense. But just, okay. yeah. 16. All right. So um, when I was a senior in high school, mm -hmm. I turned um, 16 um, in my, my senior year. I was young. I decided to take a year off between high school and university and decided to be a, a foreign exchange student in Germany. Because I had three years okay. in German in high yeah. school, applied, got accepted. They um, they called me a month before I was supposed to leave and said, "We're very sorry. The German government has lowered its quota to thirty. You're number forty four. Mm -hmm. um, would you be interested in going to Holland or Finland?" And I said, "Holland, because you know it's a German yeah. language. It mm -hmm. wouldn't be too difficult to learn Dutch." Mm -hmm. And they said, "Okay, fine. You're going to Holland." One week before I was supposed to leave, they called again and said, we're really sorry about this, but um, Holland's out. How about Finland? And I said, fine. Good. Okay. So. And you're leaving today. <laughs> <laughs> so, so I rushed home, and I was actually in the, the uh, dentist chair when they, when huh? they called. I, I had to go talk on the, uh, the receptionist's phone. Yeah. And... Um, Okay, so we, we get you to Finland now, uh, yeah. 23, 24, right. you're doing translations. Yeah, I'm being offered translations yeah. by people calling the English department. They say, mm -hmm. you know, do you have anybody who does translation? 
right? And there were two or three in the department, but most of them, those people didn't do very much, and I was young and mm -hmm. interested, you know, so I, I tried my hand at a few translations. As luck would have it, the very first translation I did was really interesting and very well written. It was Finnish ethnography. Mm -hmm. I just loved it. You know, I, I was hooked. And so, but Finnish has become a big part of your life yeah. since then. Yeah, you're yeah. still translating from, from oh, Finnish? Yeah, you, yeah, yeah. still yeah. translate from Finnish. Yeah. Nowadays I don't do technical translation anymore. It's um, uh, literary and screenplays. Yeah? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Even in Hong Kong or is it... No, I mean it's international. Yeah. Right? Yeah. 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 I, I, people in Finland email me and ask if I'd be willing to, to translate this or that. And a okay. few plays. Okay. Wow, mm. okay. Yeah, so since 19, oh, 2005... Uh, my my career has turned you know as a as a freelancer has turned entirely in this new direction. Okay. Well, um, now let's just map out out geographically from Finland to Hong Kong. What, what <laughs> happened? Just just briefly. I was I was in Finland fourteen years. Yeah. Left Finland in nineteen eighty nine. Moved back to the states to the University of Mississippi, and um, ended up working there for a total of 21 years, till 2010. During that time, I spent two years in Russia, five months in Spain, in, in mm -hmm. Barcelona. Mm -hmm. um, and, um, you know, 21 years is a long time. I was feeling restless, but I couldn't get out. And, and um, finally, in uh, 2008, I decided to expand my the scope of my, okay, my so search. And I started looking... looking yeah. um, beyond North America, and um, applied for seven jobs in Hong Kong, and okay. got... So, so the books that, that you, wrote, you wrote on translation, starting from the translator's turn, right. yeah, and, and, and a whole series of... I wrote the translator's turn in Finland okay. in the late yes. 80s, All right. 87, 88. And then the others would have been... Uh, the others the I wrote in Mississippi. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. In fact, when I was living in Finland... Um, I did a lot of American studies, and my mm -hmm. PhD, in fact, was was American studies. Yeah, so it's something entirely different, right? From, from translation, uh, and it, so it, I, the way I've thought about it is that uh, you know, living in a foreign country, studying the literature of my country, mm -hmm. sort of connected me, right? Okay, it was a, a kind of intercultural project. Moving to the states, studying American literature seemed boring, right? so <laughs> <Okay>. <clears throat> too easy for you. Yeah, and so I and and by that time. Um, the Translator's Turn came out in late 1990. It's got an any one publication year on it, but it was uh, came out in okay. uh, the end of the of 1990, and it caught on. Cool. People were interested in me. There were people were inviting me to to give lectures and, in translation studies. Yes, yeah, in translation yeah. studies, and yeah. so you know it was yeah. exciting, and it was a major transitional period, as you know. You know your mm -hmm. your early stuff came out in the late 80s, but really you really started well. I don't know when you experienced that your your work was catching on, but early '90s probably, right? I don't think mine's caught on. <laughs> oh, you're, you're on. Stop. Okay. Hold on. What's interesting for me is that you're doing all these books on translation, but you're translating at the same time. Yeah, yeah. People don't know that. Really? People accuse us of being theorists who never who don't know how to translate. Well, but why would anybody accuse us of, of that? I mean, that's just that's yeah, right. <laughs> Who could believe that? Yeah, well, and, and you know, in my work, I'm, I'm constantly referring to my own experience as a translator. So if people are okay. accusing me of not doing translations, yes, sure. then they're not sure. reading my books. Okay, okay. No, they get, they get yeah. accused of things. But I, I, I did um, some literary things early on, started translating from Finnish in uh, 1975, and um, when I was 20, 21, something like that. Um, but mostly I did technical things from okay. 75 yeah. until 2005. Okay. Yeah. Technical, commercial, medical, pharmaceutical. Okay. Legal. Good. Now, now, what, in translation studies at the moment, what sort of work do you think we really need, that we're in need of? If somebody came to you as a doctoral student and said, what should I study, what, what, what should I do? What, how, how do you respond to that? Well, I'm increasingly feeling like the work I do is um, sort of ancient, outdated. Uh, the, the work that I enjoy doing is is theory with a 
a grounding in the humanities mm -hmm. and the social sciences, mm -hmm. I suppose I have to say. Psychology and yep. soci sociology in addition to um, you know, literature and language and, and, and cultural studies and so on. So that that is what interests me, but I know that that is not at the core of the the field right now. Um, the the sociological turn, which you were doing ten years before the sociological people usually say about two thousand was the sociological turn. You you've been doing the sociological turn for. I've just been turning around. <laughs> <laughs> so <laughs> so uh, um, that. My work has moved increasingly in a sociological direction, okay. but without doing the kind of empirical, qualitative research that um, that I think characterizes the sociological term. Mm -hmm. sure. um, and and so that's something that I do recommend. Do you think there should we should go in that direction? I, I definitely or? do. Yeah, I, I don't want to. All right, I'm that's not fine. You don't right? have to. But I, but I, but I think it's a, a really important, valuable direction in translation studies, and, and I do recommend it to, to students. Mm. Is there anything specific in the context of Hong Kong that, 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 that should be applied to translation, do you think, or that should open up new avenues? Well, Hong the, Kong and China. This, the, the, this the, interesting, the interesting question, we were talking about this before, the, uh, the Chinese roots of eco-translatology, right? Um, in China, up, up until very, very recently, the basic approach was to take everything from the West. And to treat Western translation scholars as rock stars, you know, which is very, mm -hmm. very heady for people like us. We get invited there and we're treated like, like visiting royalty, you know. And, um, uh, and the, but the result for the Chinese is all good things come from outside China. And you know, China's got a long, illustrious cultural heritage, long philosophical tradition, you know, Confucianism and, and Taoism go back 3,000 years. It's really, well, not quite 3,000, but a long time, uh -huh. 20, 2,500, 2,600 years. Um, there's a lot of really interesting stuff there. Martha Jung, who just died uh, two or three weeks ago, um, brought out that, that great uh -huh. anthology, yes. right? Um, but that just barely begins to scratch the surface. Um, and, I, and I think that the, the pressing project for Hong Kong and, and greater China is to explore those roots, mm -hmm. to, to see what would follow from, you know, thinking seriously about Chinese philosophy mm -hmm. as it applies to language and culture. And do you think that's just for Chinese to do, or do you think that oh, I'm doing more it too? Sure. You know, I'm I'm living here, and so, and and um, and so it interests me, mm -hmm. and uh, I've got just enough Chinese to be able to compare translations to the original with a dictionary and and so on, um, but I think that that. You know that's most pressing for Chinese people, mm -hmm. uh, Chinese translation scholars. Why shouldn't they study the West? You know, mm -hmm. there's no reason why they shouldn't. But um, it it does seem like um, paying attention to translation histories and philosophical histories in China um, would be a a fairly pressing priority. Okay. Good. Yeah. Thanks very much.